Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I have been on this journey to improve my proximity flying. Recently, I've been experimenting with HD Zero's new 1080p 30 mode. I was interested in this mode. Um, it gives me high resolution, so you can see like the really tiny things, and it'd be great for my DVR footage because it's gonna be a high resolution, that'd be great. But it is at 30 frames per second, so what does that mean? for reaction time, for instance, when you're flying proximity. So we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I kind of want to give you a little bit of history of how I got to this point, and then that'll all tie in. You'll see what I mean when I get there. So a little over two years ago, I decided to try Bubby FPV's race. Now, if you're familiar with Bubby's flying, you know he's got this really smooth, flowy flying, and I was really impressed with that and I wanted to try to figure out how he was doing that to see if I had anything to do with his rates or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So, but let's back up just a second. So I was flying at the time 660 degrees per second, and I got to that point by gradually lowering my rates down over the years. Like most of you, you probably started out like I did, uh, flying Mr. Still rates, or like, I don't know, they're like 1,200,000 degrees per second. I think it's like 1,200 and something. Anyways, like on all three of the, uh, the axes, and it's crazy. And um, I don't know, I don't know how he flies it that way. I really don't. But anyways, so start out that way, and I gradually over time gradually lowered my rates down, you know, through all kinds of experimentation and stuff. And I finally landed on 660 degrees per second, and I was pretty happy with that. Then comes along Bubby, and I'm watching his flying and stuff, and I'm like, that's pretty pretty cool. So I asked him offhand one day. In the chat, I asked him, I said, uh, I said, so what rates are you flying? And so he sent those to me. And I said, I said, wow, those are low. He goes, oh, yeah. And I said, I think I'm going to try them. And he goes, oh, this should be interesting. So for those who don't know, the rates are 458 degrees on roll. It's like 440 degrees on pitch. And I think it's like 184, 185 degrees on yaw. So, yeah, pretty low. W really low. Even low for me, and I was flying at the time 660 so I tried those, and at first it was it was a shocker. But what I learned by sticking to it was that that slower rate gave me not only more resolution on the stick, but it kind of slowed, kind of dumbed down my reaction time. See, my problem many times is I react too quickly or overreact when I'm doing different maneuvers and that kind of thing. At least that's what I was noticing. And when I had those slower rates, that helped to subdue that down, brought that down, um, you know, kind of brought in line. And then, I mean, overall, it smoothed out my flying, too, just because you got all that extra resolution. But the big thing for me is it really slowed down my reactions. So, like, I had a problem a lot of times when I would, like, do, like, a split S over top of something and come back under. I would react too quickly and, like, level out way too quickly, which looks terrible. And with those slower rates, I found it slowed me down, which made me realize where I was overreacting. I didn't really understand that I was overreacting too quickly, or maybe I did and this wasn't clicking. But when I slowed those rates down, it really helped to dial that in and, and made me realize um, that I didn't have to react so quickly and kind of helped me learn muscle memory to slow down and made a huge, huge difference. So let's fast forward just a little bit. So getting used to those, flying those, enjoying those, then I was noticing something else in my flying. And this will all tie into HD Zero and the 1080p 30 mode. Trust me, just, just stick with me for a minute. So and you may even start to see some of this if you're starting to put the pieces together and you'll, the wood starts burning and the smoke comes out your ears, you'll, you'll see. Anyways, so fast forward a little bit. I was noticing, you know, I'd slowed down and was helping there, but then I was having this problem where I was like flipping the throttle a bit too much. I was having this problem with using a little too much throttle. I had a comment on a video um, that, made me get, that made me start thinking about it. Um, he said that it looked like my quad was underpowered. And the video that he was, he was commenting on in that particular case, I was flying at the end of a pack, so the battery was depleted a good bit, and the props were really beat up. And so the, the throttle, when you blip it, didn't have as much of an effect. I got thinking about that, and I was like, you know, my flying is actually better when my quad is quote unquote underpowered um, 
And I got to thinking, I was like, how can I make my quad underpowered all the time? Well, a couple ideas came to mind. One, I could change the, the end point on the throttle, set the throttle cap, drop it down. And so then max stick is, you know, 80% of your throttle or something, or 90% of your throttle, whatever you decide that you want to get to. That's one way I could do it. The other way that I could do it was with props. I decided let's try props first. You know, I didn't really want to lose, you know, my top end throttle um, if I didn't have to, but um, I still I, I still wanted that. But in the same way, I mean, that would be the easier thing to try. But I kind of wanted to try some different props out, so I started thinking with props, and I was looking around, and I noticed um, there were some people that fly freestyle that I like. Um, and they were using the HQ J37 and the HQ J40 props. I found out later, but the J37 props. So I found those. And I was like, okay, I want to try these. So I bought some, got them in, tried them, loved the way they felt. The problem that I ran into with them, if you've been following me, you know, the durability of those things was abysmal. Maybe it's just me. That's been my experience with them so far. And I've went back and tried them again here recently and still the same, same issue, maybe not nearly as bad as I made it out to be, but still pretty bad on durability, particularly for proximity flying, particularly when you crash a lot, case in point. So, tried those, I like those, it, it kind of worked. Um, so I was like, eh, eh, let me try, let me try the other. So I decided to try cutting throttle a bit and go back to the props that I was flying at the time, which happened to be the Vanny style props. Definitely not on the lower end of thrust. Those things put out a lot of thrust. Um, and that worked, but I didn't have the same feel as I did with the J37. The resolution wasn't the same, even though you're dropping it down and, and you're getting more resolution. It still wasn't the same. The feel wasn't the same. It just wasn't right, but it worked. Um, so I kept experimenting with different, different props and different um, throttle cuts, all that kind of stuff. And then a friend suggested I try the Sabang 4934 props to get the same effect as I was getting with the J37. They're a smaller prop too. They're a 4.9 inch prop, just like the J37s. Um, but the durability supposedly is better. So I picked those props up, try them out, love them. Those props are great. Love those props. And they were ticking all the, the right boxes for me. They had the durability way, way, way better. They had the reduced thrust way better. They had a pretty good feel. So overall, pretty happy with those things and started flying those and started noticing a big improvement in my flying yet again. So I've lowered my rates. I've got my quad slightly underpowered. Everything is, is going pretty good. Around that time, HD Zero comes out with the 1080p 30 mode. Now, finally, he's talking about the 1080p 30 mode. It's about time. Blather on and on and on. Get to the point there, Stacy. Right, so it came out that mode, and so I was like, oh yeah, this is it, I gotta, I gotta try this. So, get the firmware, put that on, and immediately, I'm like, eh, I don't know about this. It was kind of stuttery, and not only stuttery, it had, um, like, it wasn't recording like in the right frame rate, and so like, you would get the video file, and it would be like a 50 FPS file. It was basically taking 25 that it was sent to the goggles, doubling it, and uh, and creating the file out of that. Looked great, visually looked you know pretty, just like if you're just kind of watching it. But it had this weird stutter, like it would stutter every so often, and I think that's because it was converting that 25 to a 60, and there's it's not an even, and so sometimes you get two frames a second difference, sometimes three, whatever the however the math works there. And so it was it was kind of crappy and I was like, eh, I like the idea, I like the concept. If they can get this smoothed out and get the wrinkles out, it'll be all right. So I go back to the 60. Well, a little bit later they get the, those kinks worked out, I get it, put it on there. Huge difference in how it feels. Still feels really slow to me and I'm flying and I'm like, eh, I don't know, it still feels kind of crappy. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to fly proximity, you know, just some cruisy stuff might be pretty good, but I don't know about flying proximity, but I was like, I'm gonna fly for a little bit. And so, you know, just kind of tinkering with it. And so I did that for, for you know, a few days. And it was at the end of one of the, uh, the flying sessions 
that I had this um, moment where it just kind of clicked. And I'm like, that felt normal. Let me try that again. And so next day I flew some packs with it and it kind of felt, started to feel kind of normal. I started to notice that I really wasn't noticing the slowness the more that I flew it. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try and experiment. Hence where we are today. I decided I'm like, I'm gonna try this for a month. Just like I did Bubby's rates, I'm gonna fly just this for a month and see how that works out. So I've been flying it for a month. How has it worked out? What have I found? Finally, you're getting to the point, Stacy. You've been blathering on way too long. So here's what I found. Much like lowering the rates, much like um, lowering my max throttle, you know, reducing the thrust because of the types of props and stuff, what I found with this lower refresh rate is it's kind of subdued my reactions and it's actually improving my flying. Crazy, I know, right? You know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just cuckoo. That could be, I don't know. Maybe it's where I'm old, I don't know. But for me, what I'm finding is that slowing down is helping me either mentally, on the sticks, whatever else, you know. It's helping me to dial things in and not react too quickly and hold lines longer, which I'm hitting gaps better now than I was. Yeah, I'm crashing a whole lot, but I'm hitting gaps way better than I were, uh, way better than I was. Um, I'm much more consistent with my flying. Um, I'm much better on doing tricks to gaps and stuff than I was previously. It's kind of crazy, you know. Now, granted, it took a little bit to adjust to because it's definitely slower, but it's really not all that much slower. So think about this. So at 30 frames a second, let's say you see two frames, like your, your start end frame, right? In that same amount of time, if you were running 60 frames a second, you would get four frames of video. You'd have that start frame, you'd have two more frames in between, and the last frame basically is what you're going to get. So you're going to get four frames, double the frames. And if you were running 90 FPS, which HD Zero supports on, on one of his cameras, you would get six times that. So you would have begin frame, four additional frames, and the ending frame. How much of an impact does that really make to your flying? Does it improve what you're seeing? Can it improve your reaction time? Most certainly, definitely could. Um, you know, you're getting more data. More data is always always good. Maybe, maybe not. You know, probably good. Um, but think about it like this. Think about it with like your your rates, for instance. So when you have really high resolution, you know, really high resolution, really high rates, you can do tricks like really quick. And you can do those same kind of tricks with lower rates. They're just at a slower pace. There comes a point though, if you keep lowering your rates to where physics steps in and says, nope, you can't make that roll, you know, at that height through that because you don't have enough time for it to physically make the rotation for you to um, be upright again and fly away. You're going to crash, right? There is a physical limit. So while slower can definitely be better, there is a limit to how slow you can do certain things. Same thing with flying with this lower refresh rate. There is a limit, I think, for certain cases to where having those extra frames, you would not be able to pull it off if you didn't have those extra frames. It's minuscule, you know, difference. You know, if you look at the math on it, it's, it's a minuscule difference. And if you watch like flat footage back and you step through and stuff, you know, it's a minuscule step difference, like in the frames of how far you move between frames and stuff. But um, over the course of a, a longer period, it makes a bigger difference and it gives you the ability to react slightly quicker. In my case, reacting quickly sometimes is a negative. I know for racers, it's not necessarily a negative. Um, you know, they want to be able to react, react quick and, and get as much data as they can in. So, you know, I'm not saying that this is the be all end all for anybody, but I think it's definitely something worth trying. Um, you know, and you may find that um, your flying may improve in some ways and it may get worse in other ways. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, but for me overall, it's been pretty good. So what does that mean? Am I going to stick with flying 1080 30? I think so, at least for now. Um, I'm going to fly it for a while and see if I get to a limit to where I don't think that um, it's beneficial for me. But for now, it's pretty good. Do I think everybody should switch to it? No, certainly not. 
it's not the be all end all for everybody, but I do think everybody should, if you've got HD zero and you've got the, the, the camera that supports it, by all means, give it a try and don't just fly a couple of packs and go, nope, it's a terrible, this sucks. You've got to like devote some time to it. And if you're, you know, willing to devote some time to it, I think you will find that you like it, at least in certain aspects. Heck, you may find that you're like me. You may want to switch to it. I don't know. Anyways, that is the be all end all of the story. A month in flying 1080p 30 only on HD zero. I kind of like it. Then we'll stick to it for a while. I know I'm nuts. I'm crazy. Old age. Anyways, I'm going to leave you guys with some flying, and I will see you guys in the next video. And remember, never stop